Hi, everyone, and welcome to an all new episode of The Latest Thread with Gamble Quilting. We are your free motion quilting uh, Gamble educators, and we actually have a new educator with us today that we would like to introduce you to. So, Paula, would you do us um, the pleasure of letting us know a little bit about you? Yeah, so I'm from uh, Southwest Idaho. I've been long arming for about seven years. I've had my own gamel for almost four. Um, my husband and I have raised four boys here in Idaho and we're about to be mostly empty nested. So lots of time to quilt. <laughs> awesome, nice to meet you. <clears throat> we're looking forward to seeing some of your work and we'll be sharing some of that today actually. Awesome. So, um, so we're carrying on with our inspiration theme. And the last episode, we left off with a sneak peek of what we were going to show you today. And so I'm going to bring that up on my screen so you can see what it's going to be all about. Can you guys see this picture here? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So it just so happens to be that that's my photo. Um, I went to a uh, rock and gem show in Calgary last year, and this amazing fossil was there it was incredible so I had to take a picture of my hand beside it because it, the sheer size of it was just unbelievable um, and then when we decided to do some um, some of these episodes where you could see where we kind of draw some inspiration ideas from with just things in our camera roll so I'm looking of course we all have all kinds of pictures from hotels and weird bathroom floors and things like that that we've seen and taken photos of architecture stuff like that and I was like oh this would make a great uh inspiration photo so it's this big ginormous fossil um don't ask me to pronounce any kind of scientific name or anything it's a spirally um, thing a spirally <laughs> thing yeah that sounds perfect and <clears throat> very scientific so yeah we're going to share our pictures with you so we'll just go ahead and start showing you what we've come up with with um our thought process and uh planning and everything so whoever's picture this is can just go right ahead i believe that's mine so um you know that was actually a tough one because i could not get past the shape of the fossil, you know, the, I mean, it had to be that shape. So I used one of our uh, stencils and decided to just utilize the markings on the stencil to get my base shape. And this is what it turned out to be. You know, I, I'm all about texture. Um, and I thought with that um, fossil, you know, I mean, that fossil, the original image is just gorgeous. He can almost feel the texture without even touching it. And so I was hoping to replicate that in some form or another. And that's what it turned out to be. I really like the, the offset between, you know, the round shape, the swirl, and then the straight lines behind it. But um, I really like the the stone shapes, you know, that are really more poofy than the other ones. It was actually a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Too much <clears throat> overthinking. And, and the cool thing about seeing uh, quilting texture like this is that, you know, when you see a picture and there's um, there's dimension in the picture with foregrounds and backgrounds, like you you can run your hand over it, but you know, it's just a flat flat photo, right? Our quilting. I mean, our, don't you guys do this every pass? Just walk past it and run your hand over it, right? You can just, <laughs> Let you me can see your quilt. <laughs> yeah, you can. It's physically you can feel it. It's an actual layer of height, so that's that's super cool. Love it. Nice. Okay, so I'm showing the picture again in between, just so you guys can have a bit of a refresher and possibly, you know, um, have in mind what it was that inspired you about um, about this. So here's the picture again. And here's our next drawing. This one's mine. And I kind of, you know, I like when you look at that picture, actually, you know, how amazing it is, how perfect that forms, right? And so I kind of didn't want to have to make it perfect because I really like the idea of making it not perfect on purpose because then it's quicker and easier. 
and you get like a little bit more organic feel. So I just knew there was going to be a spiral and kind of, you know, put some stuff on there. Not knowing exactly what, when I was going to go to the machine, but. And this is chalk you've used to mark this out, eh? Yeah, just regular school chalk. So then when I went over there, I stitched just the lines that I marked. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of not enough texture at all. It was too evenly, you know, the density was too even. So I just went in and filled in, you know, the little peaky things. And it worked. Cute. <clears throat> I like this one. Teeny tiny pebbles in there. Yeah, but it's almost like you created uh, on the upper right corner a uh, ghost shape of that original one just yeah. with the smaller scale designs, but you can still see, you know, what the shape was intended to be. Right. And you've actually quilted the reverse. Yeah. Sense. And right. it's only because after I did the big one, you can see the poofy part runs in. So it would have yeah. been the poofy parts of each joining. And I didn't want that. I needed yeah. to distinguish between the two. So yeah, it's a neat effect. That's good. A good idea for us to try at home to be like, well, what if I change the negative and positive space back mm -hmm. and forth and, and see what effects that create? Cause it's totally different. I like it. Awesome. All right. This belongs to someone. It's mine. It's mine. And I was looking at this as how would I change this from just being that circular shape that is very obvious into maybe being an overall pattern somehow. And so I did a few drawings of trying to make it more of a curving kind of all over pattern. And then when I quilted it out, oh, well, that's just blank <laughs> fabric. That's it. That's the, <laughs> here comes the big reveal. <laughs> there you can see I used the wavy pattern to make just different areas that I could then quilt in. So I used the shape on the fossil. You'll notice all the ridges on that fossil. And so I added those ridges in, in areas and then adding in the swirl as well, just to make it all kind of work together as an overall pattern. Mm -hmm. You essentially dissected it. You stretched out that fossil. <laughs> That's very cool. That's really it, creative. Yeah. It almost looks like if you, if you would, instead of looking at the fossil as a whole, if you zoomed in on it, like you got one section of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two. All right. Here we are again. Our inspiration <coughs> and a drawing. Yes. Just me. I just did little spirals. And instead of taking all that time to do those nice, delicate arcs, I just did pokies because <laughs> I, um, I just wanted it to be quick and easy. So just spiral. You know pokey out <laughs> i see your threes and e's as a foundation for this yeah kind of because it curls because in it, and then bounces out yeah. exactly and that's really cool because how versatile is that that you can take that one thing and uh one base design the structure of that design and then add different embellishments mm -hmm. to it to totally change the look and you just gave my secret away sharon oh i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, sorry. I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, I, I'd like to do that. You know, that's with everything. I think a lot, you know, we all do that. You have a, a stitch yeah. that works and you just do that and add to it. So. Yeah. We mm -hmm. all have our go-tos. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun. Okay. Let's see that's stitched out. So there it is stitched out. And I started out on the you know top left with a lot heavier echoes. And then I just said, forget that. And I just wanted to see how it looked without all those echoes. So there, it's it's heavier on that one side than the other because I just wanted to see the comparison. Mm -hmm. That's great texture. I love that. Mm -hmm. Especially having different sizes of them, you know, instead of everything being kind yeah. of around the same size, it really gives a lot of interest. Well, that's another secret. Like you don't notice if something's wrong if they're all different sizes, but mm -hmm. 
if they're all exactly the same and then suddenly you make one smaller or bigger, then you're like, why? So mm -hmm. just start out. Well, and that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the other bonus too, though, because you clearly looked at it as a fill or even as an all over. And it's versatile enough where you said with the echoes, you can either do very few and keep it more open based yeah. on what density you're trying to achieve. So yeah. that's. Yeah, super fun. You can see this as a edge to edge or a background fill, both. Yeah. Okay, here's our inspiration picture, and who's next? That's mine. So I wanted to capitalize on those all those little ridges inside the swirl of the of the shell, and I wanted to echo the the curliness of it in the other feathers. So I was having some fun with my feathers. Mm -hmm, you're pretty. <clears throat> but then I realized I wanted it to fill the square. So I started with a circular template in the middle and just did part of it. And then that little dash line is the line to make sure my feathers don't cross over into the extra space. Mm -hmm. Wow. And there's my finished feathers. So pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. That one was fun to do, but I wanted it to curl around to echo that, the shell. Mm -hmm. and, and my I like kid that. looked at it and said, it looks like Dr. Seuss feathers. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'll make feathers and there's like a really big one it's like what is that really big one doing there this would be a perfect uh detail to add inside a feather that maybe is a little bit bigger looks imbalanced or whatever and just add a little flourish here and there yeah I like that very nice is that purple or is it gray technically it's purple that one didn't photograph as well but it's oh kind look of at the lavender. purple yeah it is that's purple. closer <laughs> yeah it's not funny how the Camera sometimes changes that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And our inspiration. Oh, and this one is mine. <clears throat> and I love how we all went completely different directions. Mm -hmm. um, it always worries yeah. me. And it always <laughs> worries me that they're going to be like the same and they're never the same. They just mm -hmm. never are. Yeah. So um, I was stumped as well. Sometimes we'll pick an inspiration picture. It's like, oh, yeah, I picked it. It was my picture, but what what would I do with it? And so I, I did just take this spiral shape, but I worked it into a basket weave grid design. So just drawing out uh, like a tic-tac-toe grid, basically, and uh, the basket weave, but just subbing out a spiral for um, alternating uh, basket weave sections. And really easy to move in between one space to the next with just another line that goes across and then just make your make your spiral. So that could be a cool edge to edge if you did it on a bigger scale and you had some defined spaces or larger blocks. Or it could be a smaller background design as a fill if you drew out your, mm -hmm. your grid as well. So, yeah. Super fun. Yeah, and your spirals are pretty random, which, you know, mm -hmm. and how many times you spiral, which definitely helps if you have to end up in a certain direction yeah. in order to do your lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another another fun one to take a, an idea and just plop it into a different design and combine them to make something fun. It would okay. work. It would work great if you had like a, you know, like a, a quilt that's just, I don't know, whatever, like five inch squares mm -hmm. sewn together yeah. like you could just do use that as your grid as your grid Maybe. yeah um and and you could stitch the grid lines whereas here in the drawing picture i didn't actually uh i removed them afterwards but um and you could stitch it both ways mm -hmm. but if you end up getting stuck in a spot where you feel like you know your line going one way is like oh now how do i get over there without making it look weird you yeah. could just travel on your grid line so um, both looks would work depending on how much stitching you want to do. So yeah, super fun. It can be very adaptable to a border or a sashing too, because it's, it can be very linear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you could just do one row and mm -hmm. have your lines in one particular direction. And then for, so for a horizontal sashing, then for a vertical sashing, you do them all the other way. Yeah. How fun. Lots of ideas. So that was, I'll go back to this so you can see where we drew all of our D ideas from. Mm -hmm. This 
strange. And you know, like it's just such a good idea to take pictures. How many pictures do you guys have in your camera roll? Too like many. Th thousands, right? <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I want to take a new picture and it says, I don't have enough space anymore. 30,700. <laughs> oh my word. Oh my word. <laughs> right and try to go through that and see there was something that we took a picture of two and a half years ago that uh, you can use for inspiration and sometimes when I'm stuck I'll just go through some of my old photos and go you know what you know is there an idea that I could pull part of it out and maybe put it into what I'm currently working on right so yeah. I took those pictures for a reason so go back and go back and visit them mm -hmm. very cool well we would love to see if anybody has some ideas or if something in the inspiration picture that we've chosen for this episode has sparked an idea with you. We would love to see a stitch out. Um, so you can email it to us. You can post it in one of the Facebook groups and tag any one of us. Uh, we are all on Facebook every day. So uh, we would really love to see you participate and share some of your uh, ideas with us and mm -hmm what it ignited in you so awesome well thanks so much for watching this episode of the latest thread and uh, before we go we're gonna oh, give I you don't a forget <laughs> yeah i almost did forget okay i'm gonna grab it we'll give you a sneak peek of our next inspiration they might be overachievers too they might, be. <laughs> they might beat us to the jump okay here's our next inspiration photo it's a welcome whose picture is this mine it's a doormat but there's <laughs> lots going on <laughs> yeah it's a lot there's a lot to choose from so we can't wait to show you all of our ideas and what we've come up with uh in the next episode so be sure to tune in and watch that one and we will see you next time thanks for watching bye bye bye